I am Robert Berio, a warm welcome to my channel. I installed hybrid hydraulic brakes on my Red Rover fat bike. Is it worth $340? That's the subject of this video today. After I bought my first e-bike, a Pedego City commuter with mechanical brakes, I bought a Bosch tube with hydraulic brakes and rode it for 13,000 kilometers before selling it. That gave me plenty of experience to appreciate the advantages of hydraulic brakes over the standard mechanical ones. Let's have a rapid look at the advantages of true hydraulic brakes then we'll look at how they apply to the hybrid hydraulic brakes that I bought. 1. They're lighter than mechanical brakes. 2. The brake pads last longer because they wear evenly. 3. They're far easier to adjust because one knob adjusts both pads at the same time and they don't have to be adjusted very often. 4. They have an oil fill brake line instead of a cable that stretches, therefore less need of adjustment. 5. You never have to replace cables because there aren't any. 6. Stopping requires less pressure on the brake lever. One finger can do the job. 7. The brake levers feel firm, whereas with mechanical brakes, they feel mushy. 8. They provide better braking performance. I bought my Rad Rover fat bike with ordinary mechanical brakes too soon because a year later the manufacturer began making it with the superior hydraulic brake system. Unfortunately, it's not possible to install a system with hydraulic brakes on this model. However, I found out that I didn't need to be stuck with mechanical brakes. Now there exists a compromise. It's a kit that contains a front and rear caliper to replace your mechanical ones and that allows you to keep the levers and cables. It's called a hybrid hydraulic brake system. Let's look at the similarities and the differences between mechanical and hydraulic brakes. Both systems work by causing the action of the brake levers to squeeze a pair of brake pads against a rotating disc the friction created by the brake pads against the disc causes the wheel to stop turning. The mechanical brake comprises a lever on the handlebar, a sheath that guides a steel cable, and a caliper that contains two brake pads actuated by the cable. When you pull in the brake lever, it puts tension on the cable which actuates the caliper that squeezes the disc. On the other hand, with hydraulic brakes, the force is transferred from the brake lever by pressure through an oil-filled tube called brake line. This pressure actuates a piston in the caliper that causes the pads to squeeze the disc. As you can see from this picture, it's a tube that feeds into the caliper, not a cable. When you install the kit on an e-bike with mechanical brakes, you can keep the original levers. This way, the brake cutoff so that safety switch that turns the motor off when you apply the brakes isn't affected. Hydraulic brakes are far superior to mechanical ones for a few reasons. First is the action of the calipers on the pads, which is very different. With mechanical brakes, if you look carefully, you will see that the inside pad is fixed, and it's only the outside pad that presses against the disc. As you can see, it deforms the disc slightly with each squeeze. The pads don't apply an equal pressure on the disc, which causes them to wear unevenly, and it takes more pressure to obtain the desired braking action. Here we see my new hybrid caliper, the front one. This is the rear caliper. The hydraulic caliper is a sealed system that's filled with oil. The cable actuates a piston that pressurizes the oil, which moves the pads against the disc. As you can see, both pads move and the disc isn't pushed over to the inside like it does with mechanical brakes. I asked my local bicycle store if they sold hybrid hydraulic calipers. 
They were out of stock and their supplier was back ordered to an indefinite period of time. I looked on Amazon. They had several models that looked like what I needed, but since I wanted to make sure that I was getting good quality and that it would fit on my Rad Rover, I decided to buy from a company from which I had bought my controller upgrade, Area 13 in California. You might have seen my video, How I Made a Rocket Out of My Rad Rover. Instead of buying a cheap set for $60 on Amazon Canada with free one-day delivery, I put up $148 US for a set of two from Area 13 because it's a company that I know and trust. Here is the total cost breakdown. $149 for the kit, $36.36 for shipping, adds up to $185.96. The currency exchange was 1.36, so in Canadian dollars it came to $252.91. Upon delivery, I had to pay customs and taxes of $48.74. The installation cost me $34 plus tax, which was $39.09. I could have installed them myself, but since I haven't needed much servicing on my red, I use this as an excuse to give my local bicycle store a bit of needed business at this time of the year when the peak season is over. It's important to forge a good relationship with a bicycle shop. For a grand total of $340.74. Is it worth it? I'm basing myself on my past experience. When I had my Bosch Cube with hydraulic brakes and my Pedigo with mechanical brakes, two differences were obvious. With the hydraulic brakes, the brake lever felt solid and firm, whereas with the mechanical brakes, the brake levers felt springy and slightly mushy. Also, with the hydraulic system, it took much less pressure on the levers to lock the wheels. The braking performance was much superior in every way. So is it worth the trouble and $340? Assuming that I got the best quality in the market, which I can't be sure about, let's look at the advantages we looked at earlier. One, they're lighter than mechanical brakes. True, but really, a few grams are of no concern when you have an electric bike. Two, the brake pads last longer. That will be true with the hybrid calipers, although it's only a marginal advantage. Three, they're a lot easier to adjust. Well, this does apply to the hybrids, and for some people, this will make the difference between doing it themselves or having to pay to have it done by a professional. On the other hand, they rarely need to be adjusted. Four, they don't have a cable that stretches. That's not true with the hybrid brakes. 5. You need to replace cables. You will continue having to replace cables that break and sometime in the distant future you'll have to change the oil. But after 13,000 kilometers on my cube, I never had to bleed the brakes nor change the oil. 6, 7 and 8 are things that I could only determine by road testing the new calipers. 6. They require less pressure on the brake levers. With hydraulic brakes, there's a master cylinder in the brake handle that puts a lot of pressure in the brake line with very little pressure of the fingers on the lever. With the hybrid brakes, you still have the friction of the steel cable that runs through the sheath. That doesn't change by changing the calipers. My subjective impression is that the hybrid system makes a slight improvement in the pressure you have to apply on the levers probably because the piston in the caliper magnifies slightly the force that you put on the lever. 7. The brake levers feel firm as opposed to mushy. Again, from my impression, there's no improvement in the feel of the levers. It still feels springy. 8. Now the most important one. They provide better performance. My first impression was that the braking was better with the hybrid hydraulic brakes than with the original brakes. But how would I prove it? What kind of objective test would validate the claim that hybrid hydraulic brakes give better performance than simple mechanical ones? Braking distance? Yes, but 
I hadn't tested my mechanical brakes before doing the switch. So it's too late to do a comparison. But I got an idea. Not far from home in Gatineau, there's the steepest hill within 100 kilometers, the Main Street Hill. It's a 16% incline, which is equivalent to 30 degrees. I had gone down that hill on several occasions, and it was really impossible to go down without applying the brakes. It took a lot of pressure on the brake levers. If you don't brake when going down this hill, I think you could easily reach 80 kilometers an hour. The police are constantly stopping kids for speeding with their pedal bikes. I decided to try this with my new hybrid brakes. My son Philippe held the camera below the steepest part of the hill and waited patiently for me to appear at the top. I started my descent and the bike gained speed without the motor and without pedaling. When I reached 40 kilometers an hour, I eased on the brakes just to maintain that speed. And when I reached the steepest part of the hill, I braked hard with both brake levers, leaning back to put less weight on the front wheel, but without locking the wheels. Watch this from Philippe's point of view. That's pretty good braking. I had a camera running on my handlebars, and this is what I could see from my point of view. The result was astonishing. The videos don't show how steep the hill is, nor how scary it was to go down and break hard at that speed, so you'll just have to depend on my subjective opinion. Since then, I've ridden the bike about 300 kilometers around town, and all I can say is that I'm very satisfied with the new brakes. The question I wanted to answer in doing this video is, are they worth $340? My bicycle store could have placed an order for a good set for $180 plus Quebec's 15% sales tax from their supplier that was back ordered, and I could have saved maybe $100. But I wanted them for a trip that I was hoping to do soon. Let's put it this way. If the Tooth Fairy gave me a magic wand, which if I waved at my bike, it would give me my money back and reinstall the original brakes. Would I wave that wand? My answer, definitely not. I hope you found this video useful or interesting or at least not too boring. If you like my channel and would like it to flourish, you could help by giving this video a like or writing a comment or by sharing with your friends and family. And if you haven't already done so, to subscribe. Thank you for having joined me. And remember, never quit cycling.